Hey everybody, welcome back. I am covering my rock with paint. Uh, just the front, the surface to start it off nice and bright white. So it's kind of like a canvas. So I've primed the just the front of my rock uh, with white acrylic paint. Now I'm gonna be using uh, some sponges. You can use any kind of sponge you want. I'm using a couple of different shades of blue. Uh, one is a neon blue bird, I believe it's called. And uh, another one is, it is called Ocean View and it's a very, very light blue. And I basically just smudged a bunch of that on with a sponge and I'm taking a dry sponge and sponging over top of that to kind of give it the look of a sky. So it's kind of like a blurry blended sky with some blurry clouds. And then I'm going around the outside with my darker blue it's not really dark it's actually a neon but it's blue bird and that's from martha stewart uh no need to worry you know me i put all of the paint names in the description that i've used so if you're worried about using the exact same colors as me they will be listed in the description of the video don't mind my rubber gloves when i'm sponging i get very very dirty so I thought I'd save my hands a little bit of mess. Now I'm going to take a bigger sponge with a little bit of white. Make sure you sponge off some of the paint. You don't want too much on your sponge or it's not going to give you the airbrush effect that I like to go for. So I've just sponged on some random, almost looks like clouds. And now I'm using a different sponge. Make sure you rinse off your sponges and dry them off as much as you can before you use them again because or else you're gonna have a mess. And all the colors blend together and all of that fun stuff that you don't wanna deal with. So this might not make sense to you, all this green that I'm putting in the sky, uh, but it will make sense to you in the end. Once again, don't put too much on your sponge. What this is gonna be is some blurry trees that are in the background of uh, our hummingbird. So it's kind of like when you look at a photo of a hummingbird, you can kind of see the background is blurry, but it's focused. The photographer is focused specifically on the hummingbird. And that's what this is going to kind of resemble when we're done. So we're going to have some blurry trees in the background, and then we're going to bring a branch over top of that and sit our hummingbird right on that branch. So I am just going to randomly sponge on some blurry trees that are in the distance. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of brighter green, just kind of darken the top bits of those blurry trees. But make sure once again, you uh, use not very much on your, your, um, your paint pouncer or your sponge don't have too much on there or it just makes a big mess and it's really hard to fix it when you've already done that beautiful sky in the background right so it's really hard to fix that so just be careful don't put too much on your sponge you can always add a little bit more it's not possible to take it off so start with a little and add a little bit more so here's where we bring our branch that's going to be more in focus and I am actually um, following along the guidelines of a rock that I did last year uh, that I brought to a big art show with me and uh, it went very quickly. Um, so I was uh, actually spending some time with my husband over the weekend just unplugged and we went four wheeling and we cooked steak and potatoes at like midnight and we watched the moon and it was just absolutely amazing but then the next day we went fishing and three times a hummingbird came right up to me and like stared at me right in the face it just hovered and stared at me and it made me think of this beautiful rock that I painted last year and how special hummingbirds are they're just so I don't know they're like from a fairyland world you know they're just so crazy cool that I think of them as as such a very wild majestic creature so whenever I see one I freak out even though I have a hummingbird feeder out front and I can see them all the time and my cats are always crying at them um, when you see them out 
in the wild while you're fishing, <laughs> you don't expect to. So it was just crazy and it was just awesome. So I was inspired to paint this beautiful hummingbird for you guys to join me as well. Now I have added very lightly, you can even mix in a little bit of water to your brown paint so that you can have like a very light, light branches in the background like I've added. So, and just be random about it. You don't have to be perfect. Um, you put your trees where you want them. You put your bird where you want it. I'm sketching on the bird now with pencil, but um, I will uh, outline it in black so that you can pause it for a moment and take a look at it and, and sketch that image down. Um, my hummingbird is not going to be super realistic. Keep that in mind. Um, my trees are not super realistic. I'm not a realistic painter. Um, so this is just for fun. And uh, it's for those of you who might want to try a little bit more of a challenging Rachel's Rock because this one is a little more challenging because there's quite a few more steps to it than what I normally put in my tutorials. So I apologize. This is a long video and I hope you guys stick with me through the whole thing and make sure you share it. Make sure you hit the like button and uh, comment. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know if you are a fan of hummingbirds and if you think they're just as awesome as I do. Um, I'd love to hear about it. I've always loved hummingbirds so much. Um, now, if you can just see, this is all going to be covered over. So I'm just kind of giving the general outline of where the wing is and the beak and the eye and, and all of that, the eye space, I should say. Um, and then I'm going to be coloring this all in. So right now it looks like a, a ghost hummingbird because you can see right through it. Um, but we are going to fill that in with beautiful, glossy, metallic colors. His eyes disappeared, but I will find that for you again very soon. And I am starting with a black base on the wing and on the head because I feel like when um, hummingbirds' feathers move a little bit, you can kind of see in and it's really dark in there. Um, the, all the metallic color and everything is on top and it's all highlighted by the sun. So um, I'm going to start with a black base for both the head and the wing and I'm going to fill in the other area with white. So I'm just going to let you guys know this video has given me a hard time. So I hope you guys love this one as, as much as I do. <laughs> I spent quite a few hours editing and putting together little snippets because of course I can't do this all in one sitting. I have my kids home all summer and I have life to deal with and lately it's been super busy because of my husband's birthday and my sister's wedding and um, painting for her and and trying to keep stuff in my shop so it's been so so busy guys and I just want to thank you guys of course for sticking by and being patient so many of you asked for this tutorial so um, I was actually really excited when I got back from uh, fishing with my husband and said, you know, time to do a little hummingbird. Now I'm adding a little bit of camel and a little bit of white together because I don't want his chest to be pure white. So I am just adding a little bit of camel, a little bit of white so that I can kind of darken, I guess you can say that white chest and tail area just a little bit. I'm going to use a sponge as well. I use sponges a lot in this video, so make sure that you find some decent sponges that you can work with. Uh, I'm using two different kinds. One has a wooden stick, one has a plastic stick. Both have a piece of sponge dauber attached to the top of it, and uh, they both work the same. There's just different sizes that I use. So, so uh, the wooden ones are from Craftsmart. And the plastic ones are from Martha Stewart, and I will leave the link for whatever I can find uh, for you guys. It will, will be in the description. So I've daubed on the camel and white mixture on the chest, and now I'm going with the classic green on the wing and up a bit of the side of the tail there, because that's kind of attached to the wing. Now you, you can see I've, I've left a little branch right in front of his the white area there. 
Um, and that's going to disappear a little bit, but we're going to find that later again once we're finished sponging him and getting him the way we want him to be. Now, I'm using this metallic peridot. Uh, some people pronounce it peridot, but I say peridot. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look it up online and uh, you can correct me if you need to. Um, so this gives it like a nice sheen, a nice metallic look on the wings because it, you know hummingbirds are very metallic. Um, so I'm just kind of highlighting the wing a little bit, like the sun's hitting it a certain way. I'm not putting that metallic all the way over the wing. I, I want some of that classic green to show through as well. Now this line here is just a, a guideline. Um, it, I'm just going to use it as a guideline, this gold line that I just put on the beak. And I'm using just a little bit of gold on my sponge and I'm sponging it on around the head. And I'm going even less underneath. I don't want very much there. I, want, I don't want there to be bright gold underneath the eye there. At the top, we're going to darken it a little bit as well, but you'll see that uh, I wait for a moment before I do that. I'm adding a little bit of green in with the gold at the top, but once again, it just looks like the sun's hitting it, and it's a little bit lighter. Now we're going to be doing some fancy stuff with the, uh, the breast area, the throat, sorry, the ruby throat of the hummingbird. So um, it might be a little bit frustrating and you are going to need a fine lining brush, I promise you. For this, you will need sponges and a fine lining brush. My tutorial for my brush is in the description. So if you need help, I am there to help you with that. Now I've just kind of opened up the space where I want his eye to be, cleaned it up a little bit with black paint. I'm letting that dry. Now I'm just doing little, kind of looks like fish scales with black. Very fine, fine, fine. It's going to look like feathers soon enough. Now I'm going to go right above those black lines with gold. And it's all about pressure with your lining brush. Don't press down because the more you press down, the thicker the lines are going to be. Make sure you have a good consistency of paint as well. That really helps. Now you can see I'm just using the very tip of my brush with a very small amount of gold paint. And I'm bringing some lines up from the bottom of those little fish scales. I guess they're not fish scales anymore. They're feathers. So, <laughs> And those... Are beautiful. Now I'm going to use a dark berry wine to do the ruby throat of our hummingbird. And I'm just starting once again with the little fish scales and my fine lining brush. And I'm not being like perfect about it either. I'm not uh, making sure that all the uh, feathers line up at all. I'm just kind of being sloppy about it. Um, because it's all going to come together in the end and you will see I actually use three different colors on the ruby part so we are going to use a bright Christmas red oh there I'm just darkening right above the eye with barely any black on my sponge just barely any and all you got to do to get rid of as much as possible is sponge it out on a piece of paper sponge it on a towel that you're using to paint with and uh, get as much of it off as you can. Now I'm going over top of that berry wine uh, feather with a Christmas red. So I'm not putting it on all of them, just on some of them. I just want to highlight some of the feathers with that Christmas red. And now I'm going to just actually stretch out my ruby throat just a little bit. I'm going to bring the black down. This this is up to you. You you do it until you feel comfortable with the way the throat looks on your hummingbird. You don't have to copy what I'm doing. Um, you do what you feel you're comfortable with. Now I'm just quickly cleaning it up a little bit, waiting for that black paint to dry uh, that I just added under the red there. And I'm just outlining my entire bird. And you can adjust the shape a little bit if you need to at this point and then and then go back with your sponge and some gold and and you can do whatever you want with the shape 
but make sure you don't go out too far. Don't make them too big because they are super tiny. Now I am going to bring up some of that camel and white color. And like I did with the other feathers, I'm just bringing that up quickly with my fine lining brush. So it looks like there's some white feathers there as well. Going back with my berry wine now that I've put my ruby throat down a bit lower than the Christmas red. And then of course that garnet, it's a metallic, beautiful metallic garnet. And I'm just going over a couple of those feathers, not all of them, once again. When you get up under the chin, you want to leave it dark like it's shaded. So you don't want to put the, the bright red right underneath the, shin, the chin, not the shin. I don't know if they even have shins. So I did the same thing with the uh, metallic red, is drag the lines up just like I did with the gold feathers. And I apologize how fast this is. This was a couple hours long until I... Um, edited it and made sure that I could explain the whole thing to you in the 25 minutes that we have. So <laughs> here's where we bring him alive because he looked like a zombie hummingbird there for a moment. Just a little bit of white paint and a little bit of gold outlining everything. Just a very fine line. Don't get scared to put those little white dots in there to make him come alive. He looks angry, but I promise you, he's just not angry at all. He's he's in charge in his district, in his uh, in his tree, I guess, and he's the boss. So he's majestic AF, and he is very handsome. He's not angry. <laughs> I tell you. I'm just outlining. It's really very, very simple at the tail there. I'm not really doing too much definition. His tail's hanging lower than our rock will go. So it's going to be kind of cut off a little bit at the bottom, but that's okay. He's beautiful still. He still has a tail. You just can't see it. Now I'm adding a little bit of nail glitter. It's like a pearl color. Um, I don't have a pearl paint right now, so I'm just putting a little bit of sheen on that white part so that it still looks just as beautiful as the rest of the bird. Not so plain. Now he is literally hanging on by feathers. He needs feet, which I promise he will get feet. <laughs> I found that branch again. We're going to be adding some leaves to our branch as well um, that are in focus like the rest of our bird and branch. Now I'm just adding a little bit of gold to the top of the branch little bit of gold smudging it in a little bit so that it looks like the sun's just hitting the top of that branch there and then I do underline the branch and the under portion of all of the little branches coming off of it I underline it with black all of these steps are optional but I am sharing them with you He is a handsome little devil. Now going back to our classic green again for our leaves. And I make them nice and big. Kind of hide some of the strange looking trees that I put in the background. <laughs> so here's where you can hide little mistakes that you've made. Uh, just put a leaf there, man. That's all you got to do. And I'm literally just filling it in. This paint is nice consistency. Um, and you don't really need a lot of coats in order to get that nice bold green. And it covers everything that you've got painted right behind it. So that's what's good about it. And I'm just adding leaves wherever I feel like it. And you can do the same. He still doesn't have feet, but he will. Maybe that's why he's angry. <laughs> I'm not sure how he's staying on that branch. <laughs> so for those of you who've been waiting for a while, I am planning on doing a live very soon. 
Um, I told you that on my last tutorial, I think. So, but because I've been so busy, it might take a little bit longer for me to get to it. Uh, simply because my kids are home and they're very loud. They're both boys, so that's all I need to say. So I, I just put a black line around the whole thing just to kind of clean up the the picture on the rock. So just a fine black line around the whole outer edge and then gold dots around the outer, outer edge. And they're bigger dots because I used the end of my paintbrush. So if you have uh, dotting tools that you like to use that are bigger, go ahead, use those. Um, but you can also use the ends of your paintbrushes for dots. Now I'm just highlighting these leaves a little bit using a bright light, uh, light green from CraftSmart. That will be in the description as well. All the sponge daubers, the fine lining brush, the resin tutorial, the nail glitter that I put on, um, all of this will be in the description so that you can do this all with me. Now once I put that, that light green on there, while it's still wet, I'm just smudging on a little bit of classic green over top so that it's not so bold, but you can still see that there's a bit of highlight in the leaves. I'm going to outline our leaves with black very light line, not very thick. And it's hard to see because some of my paint that I'm using has a satin finish, so it's kind of shiny. Some of it is matte finish, so it's very matte and you can see that part easily, but when there's a mixture, it kind of it's kind of hard to tell. I promise it will all come together at the end when I have resined it and all the paint mingles in together and it looks the same and you won't be able to see all those paintbrush lines everywhere. It will all come together. Look at that. Once again, once your paint has dried on your leaves, I'm going to use a nail glitter again. You can use eyeshadow. Uh, anything glittery and gold or glittery and light green that's what I'm using to just kind of highlight once again my leaves in a different way because I like gold and glimmer and glitter and shine so of course my leaves are gonna have a little bit of glitter to them <laughs> sorry I'm not sorry so I am going to put little veins on the leaves using my dark classic green again just very simple uh, vein down the center and a couple sprigs coming off um, it stands out quite a lot on top of that glitter, so you can actually see the veins. There we go. So yeah, stay tuned for my channel in order to um, find out when I will be doing a live. Might take me a couple of tries to get started. <laughs> I do not have confidence in um, my ability to do a decent live, so I hope you guys are as awesome as you always are with me, and you're patient, <laughs> and I will just make sure that I uh, thank you for that at the time. I'm still nervous. Now I used like a pewter gray. You can just mix together white and black for for some nice little gray feet um, but I used a pewter gray because I just have that handy and I'm outlining the little fingers or toes toesies with black just kind of separating those those toes a little bit you don't have to go all out because nobody's really gonna pay attention to what his feet look like they're just happy he has feet. <laughs> now I'm about to show you it resined. Don't forget to sign your work. I did sign mine, but you might not have been able to see it. I did sign the branch. And once again, I just want to thank everybody for your patience waiting for my tutorials to come out while I'm so busy. And uh, I'm going to be trying to get a couple more up this week as well. So I love you guys. 
Look at how beautiful this is. You can see every little glimmer and shine, every little feather that we put there. Uh, the leaves, everything is gorgeous. My signature is on the bottom of the thick part of the branch there, uh, if you cannot see it. And that halo is just from my ring, my light ring. I love you guys. You guys mean the world to me. Thank you so much for painting with me. Make sure you hit the share. Share it so your family can paint too. Love you guys. Bye-bye.